Hi, and welcome to MMA Live TV. Well, it's been a, it's been a couple of busy weeks for the UFC. <clears throat> Obviously, with 249 last week, we had UFC Florida with Glover Teixeira and Anthony Smith, which had its own share of uh, controversy, let's put it that way. And, uh, you know, we en ended off yesterday with a, a really good card. Actually, a really entertaining card, one, one that probably took us by surprise here, uh, with Walt Harris and Alistair kind of overeem headlining that. So look, let's quickly briefly go through the fights. Let's, let's start with the first fight. I mean, I mean the main fight that is. Uh, sorry, before I begin, uh, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already to give us some support. Uh, your likes and your comments are much appreciated. So please click on the bell and the notification below as well. Overeem versus Walt Harris. Look, much was said about Walt Harris's circumstances coming into this fight, obviously with his daughter. A highly emotional time and you could really tell that this was playing on his mind as he came and he was really amping himself up in, in the walkthrough. Alas, it wasn't to be. Alistair's a savvy vet, man. Like, it's it's interesting. He's had actually probably the worst back-to-back -back knockouts that you've ever seen against, you know, Francis Ngannou. If you haven't seen that, t check it out. It, it was it was nasty. And then Jarzinho Rosenstrike obviously fought Ngannou as well and and so, like we're talking some really bad knockouts, but you know he's he's a he's a really decorated striker. He's been there. I think in his press conference, he's had he had over ninety fights. This is the ninetieth fight. I mean that that resume is insane. He's definitely at the twilight of his career. But look, it, it initially, uh, as we kind of suspected, Walt Harris's key to victory, he was really finishing him off early, and and he did have that. I think what what. What I'm seeing is really interesting is off the back of some of the controversy that we've seen in the refereeing, there, there was a point early on when Walt Harris was on top of Overeem and giving it to him, you'd think like that's, that's more than enough to, to stop it. He wasn't necessarily defending himself. You could say it was he intelligently defending himself. Who knows? Uh, the rest let it go. And luckily for Alistair, he was able to you know slip into a sort of better position there. And, and really, over time, we could see one of two things, especially when the second round happened, is the cardio of a guy such, as big as Walt Harris uh, didn't really pull through. Uh, he, he was getting a bit slower. But the diversity in striking, and I think the, the commentators really mentioned it, you know, when, you, when you're at the, that level of, of fighting in the UFC, regardless of whatever weight division, how many tools you have to really end a fight is going to help. And and essentially, the combination that uh, ended the fight was a leg kick to the head of Walt Harris, kind of staggered him, and it was away she wrote. Uh, Alistair swarmed over over Walt and kind of finished uh, Harris there with a flurry of sort of punches. And at and, and that stage, Walt was also pretty exhausted. So look, an emotional end uh, to what was... yeah. Th there was a lot of feelings and emotions in this particular fight. I think technically we can see that Wall Harris is not necessarily there yet, but you have the outlines of potentially down the line. Um, oh, I wouldn't say as at now in his current iteration, uh, a potential champion for the UFC in the heavyweight division. But you, you know, the heavyweight division is is not stacked at all. So you you need prospects, and and Walt Harris definitely has the outlinings of one there. Look, I'm gonna go through some of the other fights here. Um, because it was a really good card. It was a really entertaining card all the way from. The prelims. Um, look, I'm going to actually zoom back to the prelims and mention probably what I thought was the fight of the night. Really close. Uh, Nate Landwehr versus Darren Elkins. Mate, if you haven't seen that, if you haven't seen the memes, if you haven't seen the blood that was coming out of Darren Elkins' face, I think I'm actually, um, yeah, uh, the canvas after this, the UFC uh, canvas that is, after this fight was a Picasso of blood. That's how intense this fight was. In terms of the actual fight, it was a back and back and forth affair between Nate Landwender and Darren Elkins, and both guys just trading blows, absolutely trading blows, much closer than I actually thought the the decision was. Nate Landwender, Landwehr rather, is a is an individual that I'm not aware of. Um, very cocky he, for a lot of periods of time. He actually was jing himself up uh, and, and and calling the the fight towards, and he had his hand on his back as well. Um, Interesting. Uh, I'd be very, very interested to see if this was a strategic tactic from. But the short of it is, this bloke can take a, f a punch, um, and he's a very entertain. He's a pretty entertaining fighter. I actually thought potentially Darren had won this one, but here's the thing: when you're sprouting blood as much as as Darren was, 
it's you, it's going to be very hard pressed to convince a judging committee that you kind of won that, even though from a striking perspective, you can say it was relatively there. That's another thing: the ability to wear punches and, and not necessarily bleed. I know it's not necessarily something that's in the control of these fighters, but god damn it, it's it's important. It's really important for the judges. Um, another one was uh, I'm going to butcher this name, but uh, Giga Shikazi uh, versus. Owen Rivera. Like, this was a really interesting one because Giga was essentially uh, slated to meet Mike Davis. Um, and Owen came in on, I believe, 24 hours notice. Don't 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 smash me if, if I was wrong on this one. So, really gutsy by him. Owen Rivera is fighting a weight class above. So, that's number one. And number two, you could tell. They looked like... It was, it was interesting. It was almost like Dominic Cruz versus Henry Cejudo in terms of the stature of these, these individuals. But... Uh, in Owen Rivera, I think the UFC have definitely found like a hidden gem. That was, he was, he was good. He was really good. Um, especially for a guy that came on 25, 24 hours notice rather. Uh, really aggressive. Uh, some good strikes, very orthodox, extremely explosive. I think in the first two minutes, we saw three or four Superman punches. Who the hell does that? Like, like he was really rocketing out of there. Giga is... Now, this guy is really exciting. Um, um, a decorate black, ben, black belt rather than karate. Uh, you could see it. Kickboxing, he was extremely fluid. And look, there's no way he should have lost this. And he didn't lose it um, in terms of, you know, the fact that his opponent was coming 24 hours fighting a weight class above. But man, he looks slick. He's boxing when he was... Uh, uh, Mark my words here, he, his fighting style is very Israel Adesanya-like in the sense of the way, of the patience he throws it. He was actually doing a lot of these Dragon Ball Z moves. Giga is, is definitely one to watch. I'm really interested to see how this guy evolves. Uh, obviously, like uh, it'd be interesting to see if you, you have a wrestler that takes him down and needs takedown defense. But look, this was an interesting fight. Definitely check it out if you haven't on the UFC Fight Pass. Um, there were a couple of other really good fights. I'm... I'm the controversial one of the night, and there were a couple, actually, the next two fights that I'm going to go through, uh, there was a fair amount of controversy. Song Yedong versus, you know, Marlon Vera. Ouch. I think they got that one wrong. Um, this was a really entertaining fight. It was fought in the booth. Uh, it, it's, it's interesting. I'm seeing a, a lot of fighters. Uh, I don't know if this is a tactical thing. I don't know if this is just for, for sake of entertainment, but like, uh, one criticism, or not criticism is a strong word, one one note that I had to get Tony Ferguson versus Justin Gaethje is he fought in the booth. They fought at close quarters when, with his reach, it really benefited him to to fight at range. And Giga, for example, did that with Owen Rivera. Um, but, you know, with Song Yudong and, and, and Marlon Vera, I guess this was an entertaining fight. But I definitely think the totality of, of the of the striking control versus the two couple of takedowns that Marlon took. Definitely the third round, but sporadically there. I felt that he won that one, and I felt that it's interesting. What is it, 20, 29-28, 29 Split. We're talking about razor thin. Like, how, how do you get a unanimous on the last one when he took him down a couple of times? Maybe I need to reread the rule book, but Marlon Vera was pissed. Very pissed. Uh, really un unfortunate there. Song continues his, his rise in, in, into the UFC, and he's another prospect to watch. Um, you know, based on his the very limited uh, stuff that I've seen from him, he seems to be a very a strong fighter, um, very, very boxing-based. His attack is extremely boxing-based, but, you know, I'm hoping with the guys at Alpha Male, with Uriah Faber, and that they kind of shore up the, the other elements in terms of, uh, you, you know, wrestling. Uh, clinch work, etc. Because as he as he fights more established sort of fighters, he's definitely going to run into to that sort of diversity and striking. Look, this was a really interesting one, and I'm and I'm jumping because look, this card in totality was an amazing card. But you definitely need to check these fights that I'm talking about. Dan Ige versus Edson Barbosa. So Edson Barbosa is, is a legend in his own right. No one in the planet Earth has has a kicking striking repertoire that Edson Barbosa has. I mean, who can forget that spinning back kick against Terry Adam? Ooh, nasty. Um, Dan Ige is, was coming in in a really undefeated streak um, in, in the UFC, I believe. Yep, no, no, that, that's correct. 
And this was a really interesting one. I think straight off the bat, I don't know if it was just me, but I felt that there was a, not sizable, but you can see the size difference between the two sort of fighters. So yeah, it, it's really sort of, it's really sort of interesting in that particular regard. Uh, if Barbosa will continue there, because it seemingly he has that advantage. In the first round, he rocked Ige with two, two uh, hooks, I believe, right hooks. And Ige was was down. I mean, Ige did get up, but this was an interesting fight. This was a really interesting fight. Ige really aggressive, uh, but Edson Edson coming with the, with the, the striking flair that only Barbosa can provide. Uh, yeah, really really interesting this one. I think if you look at the faces at the back of it, Edson does tend to struggle when you have a little bit of forward pressure on it, and there was no quit in that particular regard by Ige. Uh, this was a this was a split decision, and this was a raise a thin one. Uh, it went to Ige. I don't know. A lot of people are saying Edson won this one. This is a toss up, guys. This generally is is a sort of a toss up. The thing I'd say about Ige, and when you have these really close sort of fights where it, it goes and back goes back and forth, and and definitely both fighters were wearing it on their face, was that Ige was pressing a lot of the action. You know, he he did come up with that uh, running knee. Um, and, and what I mean by that is, in the eyes of the judges, you're going; those things are going to partake in your head. Uh, Edson does a lot of his damage at range, and, and a lot of the times that's actually moving back as well. So did that have something to play, uh, a part to play? I don't know. It was a razor-thin decision, and you could tell by the end of it, Edson was pissed. I mean, there were a lot of people that weren't, um, that weren't feeling some of the decisions made there. Should Edson stay at this weight class? <clears throat> here's what I don't think he should well firstly he I don't know about him but when I saw the weigh-ins <clears throat> he kind of looked a bit like TJ Dillshaw like he's already quite a lean guy so he I, I don't know how aggressive that weight cut was and only he would be able to tell us that but there's definitely something that needs to be said for that and if it's if it's killing him then the answer is no but realistically thinking he doesn't Lightweight stack, man. Like, unless they make a 165, I, I, I don't see any part there. So, this fight was close. I actually think there's potential to run back again. Uh, maybe not necessarily straight away, because I know Dan won't want that. But, like, Edson Barbosa at, at this weight class, there's a lot of fun fights. Edson and Zabid, Edson and Calvin Cater. I know we're jumping in, assuming that he's won. But, like, th there's a lot of fun fights here. Edson and Jordan Griffin, my boy. Um... A lot, a lot of fun fights here. He should, he should definitely stay if this is a tolerable weight cut. Uh, yeah, it's an entertaining fighter. Um, I'll go quickly. Uh, I'll, I'll breeze through the women's fight in terms of Claudia and Angela Hill. Close one as well. Another split decision. A lot of split decisions. Not a not, not a fun time to be a ref at, at, at the moment. Referee or a judge. Really tough. Um, Angela was pissed as well. Look, this is how I saw it. Claudia... She, she took Angela down in the first round, so, so that's a tick. Controlled her for a while. Angela had the basically the most damaging strike of the night in the second round. Third round was a toss-up. Pretty tough. Uh, both girls fought tough. Um, interesting. Very interesting. Um, look, that's my ultra-quick synopsis of, of the fights. There was a lot of fights there. Definitely watch the whole card. Really, I think, Top to bottom, one of the more entertaining cards that we actually kind of saw. Probably pipping uh, the, uh, the last UFC Jackson card. But man, isn't it exciting to have the, the, the UFC back? And, and definitely the fighters are delivering. Cannot wait for the, for the next group of fights. As always, guys, please support our channel. Tell us what you'd like to see. Tell us what you're not liking. Tell us what you're loving. Um, leave some comments. Like the video. Subscribe. Uh, we'll chat later. Peace.